Hi, I'm Dylan Roberts. I'm the Chief Digital and Information Officer from Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board. And with me today, I've got... Sakurai Ambalavanan, Consultant Physician and Medical Information Officer, BCU. So this is uh, part four of a five-part series of videos and presentations we're doing to lay out our EPR strategy and options appraisal. Uh, we've covered the drivers for this strategy uh, so far, which started with AMBU covering the clinical problems and issues we're trying to resolve. We highlighted uh, the issue we've got with our current applications portfolio and landscaping BCU. Uh, and we also covered the strategic drivers of uh, healthcare in, uh, in, in Wales and the UK and the world, actually, as, as the other drivers to consider what our EPR strategy should be. This next bit is about some of the options and considerations for the different uh, approaches to EPR applications going forward with due consideration for the problems we're trying to solve, and in particular, the uh, strategic drivers for uh, health and care and new models of care in, in, in future. So I'm just going to pop the uh, application and we'll go from, from there. So our EPR strategy options and considerations. Uh, to start with, uh, what I want to do and what we want to do is to provide an analogy to, so everyone uh, understands or is coming from the same baseline of understanding of what we're talking about in terms of different types of application. The analogy that I use here, uh, based on what's been described to me before by others, is the analogy of media or the music industry. Uh, what we've got in this analogy is we can buy, if you want your music and you want to buy a, a lovely 12-inch uh, al album or, or record, what you get is a all-or-nothing situation where the recording is already pre-pressed and you have what you're given, it's laid out, and uh, that's how it's fixed forever. It's an all-or-nothing scenario. The other option, which came into being in the 80s and, uh, uh, well, late 70s probably, and is the uh, idea of mixtapes. And this is where, if, if I think back to my uh, youth, uh, where I might have recorded the Radio 1 Top 40. So in order to get the songs that I wanted, I'd be recording the Top 40. And first of all, I'd be pausing it every time the uh, uh, announcer came on. And obviously, I'd be just recording... <coughs> the uh, particular songs I liked off the top 40, that, that provided me with a, uh, a mixtape or, or an integration of different songs uh, in a particular order. But once that was done, that was done. And it'd have to re-record the whole thing again, the whole, uh, the whole experience, the whole thing, uh, again from scratch, if I didn't like that and I wanted uh, to do it. And it required... Obviously, a level of skill there for me to press pause at the right time. Of course, now uh, and since the 2000s, really, uh, in the music world, we've got technologies such as Spotify, for instance, where we've got playlists from the cloud and we've got the ability to actively personalize our experiences and what we want. We can, because all of the music and all of the components are already up there in the cloud, We've got the ability to uh, select maybe music for my mood, love music. And what will happen is we can compose a uh, set of music. We'll come together. We'll pull all those musics together for that particular move, mood. Maybe half an hour later, I need a music for drive. And again, that will be composed and pulled together uh, uh, for me. In the same way, we can, this helps, this analogy helps us to explain our electronic patient record applications approach and the different types of things that are available for us. People talk about monolithic applications, uh, applications which have been developed from one provider, uh, one system provider, which are often a jack of all trades, but they're, they're composite applications uh, which are 
integrated by the fact they're one big application. And it's an all or nothing provision from the supplier. Uh, I'm a single supplier, such as Epic uh, or Cerner or Meditech or TPP System One, potentially from a, a GP point of view, uh, where a particular supplier has developed <coughs> an application and provides it in an all or nothing way. That's what you have, that's what you're given. In some instances, we have a scenario where people buy best of breed applications, separate applications. And in order to provide that combined view of the patient, uh, they will attempt to do similar to the mixtape, uh, they will attempt to integrate these systems. These are lots of different data silos and different applications, which uh, are often very complicated to integrate. It requires integration brokers, it requires an understanding of data, it requires integration specialists. And of course, once you've integrated your systems, similar to the mixtape, if the world changes and the business model needs to change, you have to re almost redo it all again. So it's complex uh, and costly to, to do that. What we've also got actually in the modern world, and this is the modern world that is, is in place across all other industries, is the concept of composable business. And that is where through building compon a componentized approach, generally in the cloud, uh, with technologies such as web services and containerization and the like, we have the ability uh, with new technologies such as uh, digital platforms or industry clouds, we have the ability to compose uh, services by combining many components that have already been built before uh, and potentially adding those to new components so things can be reused and reused again for different purposes, which give a level of active personalization uh, similar to the uh, Spotify and uh, cloud-based music industry type equivalent. Uh, just by way of history, the monolithic applications were across industry was were, were up to 2003 type timeframe. Integration was the was the 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 way from 2003 service orientated architectures things like that. 2003 to 2014 across other industries. I think and since 2014 to date, uh, you know the the op the option of web services and composable business has been uh, has has been been developed and gone through the, the the hype cycle and is now I would suggest at a plateau of productivity in terms of its uh, its its usability and use across other industries. However, in the healthcare world, uh, the healthcare world is slightly behind, and uh, we've still got a prevalence in some cases of monolithic applications. And we've got a prevalence in particular of application integration where composable applications and services are a bit rarer. And that could be for various reasons, not least the complexity of, uh, of healthcare. Uh, examples, 95% of health EPRs today that you can buy off the shelf uh, are monolithic uh, applications. They are functionally rich. There's a benefit to them, don't get me wrong. They are functionally rich, rich, but they lock you in to a particular vendor. And uh, the other thing about those as well is that they are designed around the healthcare system of the time. So their ability to adapt to individual personal needs or, or whatever is, uh, is, 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 is limited. And they are some of the, uh, the, the vendors there. And I, and I include primary care, I include acute and uh, social care uh, uh, systems, uh, their care director being behind WCCIS, for instance. Can I ask whether the, sure. the monolithic applications, could, could they be transformed into one piece of the composable business model that you talked about? Is that within our gift technologically? Well, although operationally, I, I think you know, jumping ahead, jumping ahead somewhat, uh, hold that thought. I'd say because uh, that there is a way. The future of applications, uh, I would suggest, whether we like it or not, the healthcare industry will catch up with other industries mm -hmm. like automotive, 
like uh, uh, yeah, music or all the other industries that where there is a prevalence of composable architectures and, compo and, and components which are combined to deliver new services, new solutions, personalised around individual needs or, or whatever. Uh, the healthcare system will move to that, no, 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 no doubt. And I think what I'd like to show later on is a proposal which says how we might do that, you know, how we might move from the old world to the new world whilst the old world's still running. Yeah. So it might be we decide uh, that actually the right thing to do based on where we are now is to maybe move to a monolithic application for, you know, for primary care, for instance. I would suggest that uh, TPP uh, is the most functionally rich and best primary care system by a mile in the in the in in the UK. Uh, appreciate Wales are on EMIS primarily, but uh, but nevertheless, nevertheless, you might say, well, actually, we will continue with that and look to work with TPP to integrate into the new world. You know, we can't you can't because of the complexity of healthcare. Uh, it's not straightforward to move in one big bang to the new world. We have to take an incremental approach, which is what we're talking about. Uh, the best of breed approach, which is probably where we are in Wales to a degree, uh, is great in terms of, in a best of breed scenario, of course, instead of the monoliths, which are a jack of all trades, you know, you will get a specialist endoscopy system, which the endoscopists will really love because it's been designed by the endoscopists but nevertheless, there's still a monolith in the endoscopist world. And similarly, uh, you know, we will get maybe a really great PAS system or we will get a, a good cancer system, radiology system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In many cases, the best of breed world, uh, you would hope a lot of those ven vendors should be looking to migrate and develop cloud native applications in a componentized way to deliver radiology of the future and endoscopy of the future, which can be composed and combined. Uh, but although you get the benefit per specialty, what we don't get, which is the problems that we encountered in the clinical aspect, we don't get that combined which is what, uh, workflow. We don't get that and decision support. And remember, you do get that combined workflow and decision support in the, in the monolith world, but it's a jack of all trades and, and you're locked into it and it's based on whenever that was built yeah. and, you're, and you're totally reliant on the vendor to develop that across the, the, the what is a complex system. But you can do some of this through applications integration, but I would suggest when the world changes, it's really complicated and costly to change the applications landscape and integration landscape. Uh, the, there are vendors uh, who are... <coughs> enabling us to get into the more composable world of the uh, future. And this is a world where, of course, uh, an ecosystem of willing application developers and providers companies can develop capabilities. So the people who should be developing new entrants to the market who are developing new cloud native based technology components uh, and solutions will clearly be uh, in this start to be in this this world. It's important when we're buying these, we make sure that they do commit to being open, et cetera. That's an important consideration. Uh, the, these composable uh, architectures uh, are reliant on, uh, ha on platforms. So actually, there are providers such as Google Health that are, well, Google, the Google Cloud-based platform, for instance, uh, is 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 a platform there there are others such as microsoft there are others you know amazon etc which will be platforms on which there are tools and services you can start to develop and build these capabilities on top of these composable components so there are the platforms there which make it far easier to get up and running in 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 this uh, world you have to consider as well that if we want to work we want to move to the composable world, then the data is really important. The data is the king. Mm. So, you know, our dream, of course, is to have that combined clinical data repository or combined longitudinal patient record. Yeah, that needs to be. And of course, 
within Wales, we've got the national data resource approach and strategy. There's an alternative strategy in Wales as well around using open air and, and the like, which is slightly confusing. But nevertheless, uh, there is an intent really that if we can separate the data from the application, uh, that's when you can, which, which you can't do from the, in many cases in the monolith uh, uh, environment or even the, the best of breed environment. But if you can separate the data from the application and make that data open to be consumed or applications providing to it, you've got the opportunity to develop true personalization. And what I mean by that is that you could have a scenario where we were talking about a diabetes patient before, might have a diabetes pump, uh, which can record every time an insulin application is made by the minute that is recorded on the phone and potentially could feed into the combined patient record. Mm. With clinical decision support tools that we talked about before, pointing to that, which could be another application, which is a, an application which has got the algorithms in it that understand the data and can make a, uh, you know, a research-based uh, conclusion from that data could provide uh, the benefit to say, well, actually, diabetes patient, you don't need to come in because over the last few months, your results have been such that we don't need to come and do an observation stay home or it could provide the patient with an, uh, an early alert to do something different it might even give instructions on what to do or potentially provide an alert if it's right into the future about bringing a patient in for an appointment so you know the point is there in that particular example we're talking about you know a specialist application for the diabetes pump a specialist application which has got an algorithm to make a judgment from data from diabetes, which also requires likely requires other data from other aspects of the of the health record. These things can be composed around that particular use case, uh, and that from the when we talk about personalised healthcare, precision medicine, and all those things, that's the future of 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 of, uh, of healthcare. But there are, as we can see on here, there are vendors who understand that and are playing in uh, that, uh, that space. So our options for consideration is based on, on that, which is more of a, a theoretical discussion, isn't it, really? Uh, the, the options we have available to us is either we do nothing and continue with our current best-of-breed unintegrated approach which i don't think is uh, is viable it's not even viable for the the system of old really never mind the systems of the future uh we apply and continue or continue to apply where we can a point to point applications integration approach uh that proves very complicated and difficult and there are real challenges with integration where you don't have uh, the full codified uh, record, we can do that. Uh, we could purchase, you know, and from a short-term perspective, a short-term as in a uh, three to five-year benefit in terms of improving the current sickness system and making us more efficient, although there's a big cost of change, we could purchase a composite electronic patient record system, such as a Cerner, or an Epic, or, or whatever, <coughs> on the acute side of things. Uh, or, or others. I mean, there are there are lots of of them out there which are, are capable. Uh, or we could look at partnerships to procure and build a cloud native uh, EPR component by component by reusing components again and again, and do that with due regard to a digital healthcare platform partner. Uh, so it's a mixture, an ecosystem of partners to help us with that. Uh, whether or not it's a Google and Amazon and other partners, which is important who understand healthcare in these systems to, 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 to do that. And of course, doing that to make sure we're aligned to the future models of healthcare, not the models of healthcare of, of today or the past. Mm. And uh, the final slide here is, is just a slide which is adapted from one that Gartner have done uh, some years ago, actually. Uh, and what, what this basically shows is that 
uh, you can have a mix of uh, of of the new world and the old world and the new world is at the top of this diagram and that's where we look to potentially procure a digital healthcare platform and also uh, an integration layer there which does mean unfortunately some of the mixed tape type technologies but what that does is if we can pull data by whichever means from our uh, potentially monolith applications if you wanted to buy one or WNCR or all the separate applications into a consistent uh, data store we can start to build the application components based on use case by use case over time and that helps us to start move from the old world to the new world and it, and we are going to have to recognize we're going to have to uh, have a, uh, a it's, well, it's not parallel running we're going to have to have a running together uh, while while we move to the future uh, architecture of uh, of uh, of digital healthcare so i'm just going to pause there because uh, that's a uh, a point in which i think we should conclude part 4 any questions or thoughts on that ambu before we Stop the recording. So from a clinical standpoint, uh, do nothing is not an option. I've shown you how difficult and challenged uh, the clinicians are at this point in time in yeah. management of patients. The composite EPR solution clearly seems to me that it, 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 in this current financial climate is very unlikely to be immediately achievable. The incremental composable approach, which is more future proof, seems clearly the more attractive direction of travel. Um, do, do you see any major barriers in that yeah. particular approach? What, what do you see as something? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the the major barriers, in my view, is uh, is the immaturity of that market. So, how do new entrants break into that market? Yeah, when uh, there's such a prevalence of uh, incumbent suppliers. Yeah, that that is the uh, uh, significant challenge that we've got but i would say in the welsh environment and scenario uh, you know we've got digital health care wales uh, we've already got a best of breed situation uh, with a level of integration so we've got the opportunity i would say to take that incremental approach in my opinion uh, and this is my opinion as opposed to the opinion of bcu or, or anyone else for that matter I would suggest that there are vendors out there with uh, good software engineering skills uh, who would be keen to partner with health boards and with a health system, people with a knowledge of what new models of care might be, what existing models of care might be, what existing processes in healthcare workflows, etc., are, to uh, uh, start developing those components and start developing those as a combination, those services or capabilities, uh, I, I believe there are vendors out there who'd want to do that. And there may be opportunities for joint ventures or whatever, because uh, those vendors, when they work uh, with, with us, have the potential to be uh, new entrants who've got a good customer base to, to start with and develop with. Uh, so I, I think, uh, uh, you know, appreciate the risk is a bit of being a, a, a first mover but uh, this is well trodden direction in other industries so uh, so I don't know if that answers the question yeah, for you it's a bit of a big question thank you okay thanks very much